guys, welcome to today's vlog, or not vlog, video. I'm here with Jake, my trainer. You guys know him. He's, <laughs> he talks to you through the video. They love when you do, like, explain, like, well, like you did today. Cool. Very, very cool. Um, so you guys asked a lot of questions on Instagram for both of us, like personal training questions. I think most of them are personal training. We will see. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through and answer them. Kicking it off with you, why did you become a trainer? Uh, so, long, long time ago, um, I uh, grew up an athlete, played basketball, baseball, football. Um, I had a hernia on my front groin wall um, on, during Ouch. a summer job. It was bad. It was really yeah. bad. And, um, you know, athlete, you eat, drink, whatever you want. Um, so that's what I did. After I got my hernia, my athleticism was just gone. Yeah. So I ended up getting very, very, very heavy. Um, I, at my heaviest, 336 pounds. Wait, are you serious? I was a big boy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever told you. No, I didn't know yeah, that. I was big. I was real big. And after I got my uh, hernia repair, I was, um, I got a trainer. Kicked my butt into shape. Uh, I lost 90 pounds in the first year. Um, and then it's just been smooth sailing ever since. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so you just, just wanted to help other people? Yeah. So the first, uh, the first person I would text every morning whenever I would see progress, and I'd be like, uh, Joe, his name is his uh, Big Joe. Um, he works at a Westside Barbell, famous, famous, famous yeah. um, uh, gym out here in Columbus. But he, I would, first person I would text like, Joe, dude, I gotta get another shirt. Like this thing is baggy on me. Like I can't fit. Awesome. I can't wear these jeans anymore. Like I'm falling out of. Like I'm swimming in my clothes. And it was just a really good feeling, you yeah. know. So he would be the first one. And after I got down into a healthy uh, body fat percentage, like no more high cholesterol, no more uh, high blood pressure, I was just like, that's what I want to be. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. Yep, yep. <clears throat> so yeah. that was, you had to have been still in high school? Uh, no, no, I was uh, fresh out of, this was Cause he, There's a question in here. He did go to school for exercise science, right? Or exercise uh, physiology. 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 <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But yeah, that was 2000. I think it was 2009 when I got my hernia. No, 2008. 2008 wow. when I got my hernia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how long have you been a personal trainer? Uh, I've been doing this for five years now. Five years. Yep. And you started at a at a Crunch Fitness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I had um, I was in uh, Human Resources, um, and I had my background with exercise physiology, all that good stuff. So um, I picked it up. I got my uh, just a regular even uh, so just FYI. Doesn't matter what your background is. You need a you need a certification yeah. to do personal training. I'm pretty um, sure so, nurses and doctors have to get that yep, too. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah, you could be you can be a, a full blown doctor, and you still have to get a cert to train people. So um, I picked up my cert. I started training part time, um, and then where I was at um, was just a good opportunity to get out. And I'm just like, I will take a buyout, and I picked up uh, personal training ever since. Awesome. <laughs> um. How often per week do you suggest hit lists or weights? Um, it always depends on the goals. That's yeah, what I saying, will yeah. always, there's a lot of factors. Um, I get that question a lot. How often do I recommend this? And so first thing, um, what are your goals? And so I've told this to Kelly. So, and I break this down for everybody. So your goals should determine how you work out. How you work out should determine how you eat. Mm -hmm. If you try to switch that up whatever way, um, then, you're probably you might see results, but it's always going to be limited. Yeah. Um, because I'll ask people like, "Hey, what kind of workout are you doing?" Oh, I'm doing hit like five times a week. Oh, that's great. Uh, what kind of diet diet are you on? Uh, I'm on intermittent fasting. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? So it just kind of depends on the goals. Yeah. Um, normally, if you're trying how fast you're trying to lose weight, normally two to three times is pretty well standard. If you yeah. want more intensity. Um, then you can you can up it a little bit, but your diet has got to be on point. Yeah. We've talked about this yeah. a bunch, but your diet has got to be um, where it's at. Your sleep's got to be. Your body has to be able to recover. Yeah. Well, I've talked about this too. There's a lot of people who I feel like they try to overanalyze workouts. So before actually getting into it, they're like, oh well, what's which is better? And they try to like perfect everything. I think people mm -hmm. like to make it sound more complicated yeah, than it absolutely. is. Absolutely. But it's like if. If you're not gonna finish the entire HIT workout because you're tired and you don't like it, then LIS is probably better for you yeah. because you'll actually do it. <laughs> yep, that's so, exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. weights, weight training. We we lift six days a week, but that would go back to like it depends what your split is. You mm -hmm. wouldn't want to train full body every every mm -hmm. week. You need to or every day. No. You need to give your muscles time to recover. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, I always tell everybody because um, I get a lot of people like. 
uh, on Instagram, like if you're on an explore, uh, you're on your explore page, you'll find just like random like fitness posts, mm -hmm. like the best workout split. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but you can't, you can't say that. You can't say that. Because everyone's no, different. No, you, there's nothing. Um, I, that what stuff makes the, me so uh, mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of gets, kind of gets to me, but yeah. um, there's no such thing as the best workout split because um, genetically people have uh, a lot of different genetic potential. Um, sleep varies, job varies, stress, stress is a big one. Um, just kind of depends on what your body can handle. Some people can handle six days a week, some people can't handle more than three. When would you recommend like a push-pull legs split rather than like individual muscle groups? So, um, push-pull legs, uh, there's... That's so popular, yeah, everyone tries yeah, yeah. to do that. <laughs> Chris is trying to do that right now. <laughs> um, normally, if you're uh, the most ideal and the, the one you're gonna see the fastest results, um, with a push pull uh, legs is going to be with a pure strength and conditioning yeah. program. So if you're going for strictly strength, um, then push pull. There's a program called Super Compensation. That's going to be your uh, your fastest way to get strong. You're yeah. going to see the best results to get strong. Now, not talking about aesthetics. I was going to say that's you're why, gonna get a six that's pack, why I like, Not trying to get muscle mass. Yeah. Like you're dr strictly going to be strong because if you've ever met people. Um, muscle density is very different. Um, yeah. I just go back to a lot of farmers. Farmers grow up, um, you know, tossing tossing bales of hay, and they're very just strong. They're just very strong. They may not look like they're buff or nothing like that, but they just have. Uh, they're just really, really strong. Yeah. Um, Aesthetics does not equal strength, and yeah. strength does not equal aesthetics. Yeah. So, um, but push pull legs, that's great and everything, but. Um, it's but, not best for like, it, like that wouldn't be the best bodybuilding mm -mm. split. Yep, that's exactly yeah. correct. Exactly. Um, how awesome is it to be a fitness professional at Lifetime? I love it. I, I love it. Um, I genuinely love it. I'm in, uh, I'm in a, a pretty big role here at Lifetime. They treat me very well. Um, but I don't know if it's necessarily uh, just because it's Lifetime or maybe it's the leaders above me. The, lead, yeah. the people who uh, work here at Lifetime, they have Well, I'm going to brag for him. He, this is like one of the best clubs. Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so Dublin is uh, Dublin Lifetime is one of the the pilot uh, pilot gyms where it's just like okay, we have the right amount of talent, the right people yeah. in the right place, so we're gonna try to roll out a certain program, and if it works here, then we're gonna roll out to the entire company. But Dublin Dublin is is awesome, but Lifetime is a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good company to work for. The nice Lifetime's expensive, which everyone a lot of people complain about, but there's so much included that I don't think people realize like you have the sauna you have the pools you have classes you can take for free there's a yeah. lot of a lot of stuff included and it's clean it's very clean <laughs> it's like, very very clean. It's clean which is a huge thing <laughs> very in my very clean yeah. how to incorporate more plyometric movements into your workouts okay so um <clears throat> it depends because you can't just do plyometrics all the time um, so there are certain energy systems that you have that when you do an explosive movement, when you do a steady movement. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Okay, you keep going. <laughs> so you have different energy systems um, depending on how long, how fast, how explosive you're doing. Um, you're doing, <laughs> you're doing uh, how fast you're, or uh, how often, how fast. Um, so you have three different energy systems. So. Plyometrics is going to be uh, tapping into one. Um, so you should have plyo as a part of your workout program. However, that shouldn't be the only way to work legs. So, um, so normally, we, uh, we do a lot of uh, normal traditional lifts. Um, however, today we did explosive movements. So every so often you'll see Kelly will have her do lump, uh, jump lunges. Um, today we did box jumps. So that's gonna be an explosive movement. That's gonna be a completely different energy system that you're tapping into as opposed to if you're just doing steady walking lunges for, um, for however long or if you're doing a um, uh, squats for however long. Yeah. Like it's completely different. So just the, just the energy systems vary. But plyometrics should be part of everybody's program. You should have um, a well-rounded program. Mm -hmm. I believe that everybody is an athlete. Um, so um, everybody is an athlete. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. So you should have things that are going to test your athleticism. A yeah. well-rounded athlete has uh, an explosion part of their part of their arsenal. For and sure. like if you, well, yeah, if you guys are watching this, you probably want, you watch most of my vlogs. He'll incorporate them 
like we mainly do like supersets and so it's nice to pair with something else like jump squats so it keeps your heart rate up a little bit more and you burn so many more calories throughout but then we also have days that are a lot lighter yeah, yeah. We, you know you can't Lighting train this yeah yeah <laughs> what do you do if your client doesn't uh reciprocate the efforts you're putting into their training uh that's going to be something where you have to talk to them yeah so as a trainer um most most uh certifications they will um the real good certifications they will part of it will be like the the knowledge aspect of yeah. it like what you need to know about your muscles and then there's also going to be a portion about how to coach yep. um, and communication is going to be huge uh, i was telling kelly um just the other day that uh, my um cert for uh, nutrition um half of it was what's in an apple you know when do you need it um all the what how it affects Food your science, chemical but yeah, yeah exactly right um the nutritional values of everything and then the other half of it is just strictly coaching how to talk to somebody about it because there's always going to be an emotional element that yeah. you have to consider um me personally i'm a i'm an emotional lifter so like when i'm lifting some some songs i'm listening to it's like kendrick lamar or uh, or like tupac and yeah. the next one is just like like the head, Disney soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Disney's greatest hits on, you know, uh, it's just, I don't know, that's just, uh, there's always going to be an emotional element. Yeah. But you have to understand that certain clients um, you have to have communication with, um, have to understand how to coach them. But yeah. you, in that you have to i call it the coming to jesus talk yeah. like you have to like hey um i'm giving you these workouts um your doesn't feel like your heart's in it you know yep. are you seeing the results and sometimes you have to cut ties with them and say you know i don't feel like i'm getting to you i don't yeah. feel like i'm motivating you i don't feel like um there's good chemistry yeah. and if you have good chemistry between a client and the trainer then everything should fall into place however there are some times that yeah. you know the effort level is not there and it might be my coaching style i i like it it goes too. both ways though which doesn't mm -hmm. i don't think there i think most <laughs> people understand that but there's i i i don't know like it's not the client has to be able to communicate with the coach as well it's not the coach's mm -hmm. position or like job to come after you for like how are you feeling today or it's like did you get your workout in today or, you know it's like it the client has to hold themselves accountable as well and like if there is a problem they have to feel comfortable coming to a coach coming back to like the um you have to have a good relationship with yeah. them and like it has to be a good vibe with that but at the same time if a client isn't following a program it's also a job of the coaches to be like okay well is it something that we could adjust like mm -hmm. food like 100 yeah you know yeah. there you have to be able to meet in the middle but if you can't do that then it is it's like okay well we just might not be a good fit and we can't i can't help you reach your goals because we're not meeting on that level yeah so um, it goes both ways back in the day i just think about it, uh my basketball baseball and my football coach were completely different coaching styles my um my football coach was military like oh yeah get down you know get like drop and give me 50 you bum like you know just yeah. you know that's just like straight military my basketball was like hey you need to uh <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That he is the best. I he, love him. Joseph he... is the best. Joseph is the man. Um, my basketball coach was very, uh, was very like, uh, step your game up. Like you can do better. You've got this. There's like, there's no, no excuses. It's time yeah. to bring your A game. But yeah. then my baseball coach was almost like a cheerleader. Like, like you can do it. You've got, you know, what mm -hmm. I mean, like cheering you on. So um, people respond differently. differently and we yeah. were talking about this. Yep. There's one. There's one. Uh, one of the trainers here. He's just like militant. Like, yeah to the core yeah so and his people will never leave him the eel they love him um but they respond to that training yeah. style me personally i respond to the you can do better yeah step up your game come yeah. on come on get your crap together like that tough love yeah tough Not love just exactly tough. right exactly right <laughs> yeah. exactly right but no, it just depends way. um setting the expectation right from the get-go like saying like hey in three months we should see this kind of progress in six months we should see this um but it's Expectations and communication, that's gonna be it. But you get sometimes that tough conversation has to be had, for sure. Um, how did you get your first client slash continue to collect more clients, clientele? Um, so I- Yeah, cause that's gonna be way different for you than it was for me. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I did a Q and A and answered this question, so I'm actually I'll do it. Yeah. So um, back in the day, uh, when I first got my first client, when I was building up my clientele at an old gym. Um, it was very weight loss driven, uh, very, very weight loss driven. So, you know, I just, cause I could relate to them. Yeah. Um, I would, uh, <laughs> in college, you, you eat whatever you want, you eat whatever <laughs> yeah. you want. So, uh, so I would, okay. Chris, so I would so go, many pizza rolls. oh my gosh, it was so bad. So I would go to Speedway every morning and I'd get a coffee and I had a big old, uh, it was like a, like a, like a 32 ounce, like refillable mug. I'd fill with Mountain Dew. Oh my um, and then I would get two hot dogs, two, two for $1.50, oh, yeah, obviously, <laughs> and then two other Krispy Kreme donuts. That was my... Okay, we're back. It kind of ran out of storage. So it cut out. Anyways, uh, he ate hot, dogs, hot dogs, donuts. Hot dogs, donuts, <laughs> and Mountain Dew uh, for breakfast for the longest time. And um, when it came to, you know, people who are trying to lose weight, like I related to them. Yeah. I, and so first getting my clientele i met i would meet them at the gym that i worked at and uh, i'm very i'm very social i like talking with people i think i can pretty well talk to anybody and what it would kind of come out i would tell them about my journey they could relate and yeah. i say okay let's do it together um what changed because i i did that starting off and that was so weight loss was primarily my biggest my biggest uh, clientele however uh, as I got myself into shape, um, you know, I put myself through a different couple different programs. I went through a strength and conditioning phase. I went through CrossFit. I went through um, uh, pure like D1, uh, D1 athletics. Um, I put myself through a lot of different different uh, programs. Um, normally, like anywhere between like four to six months at a time. Um, and I finally got into the bodybuilding style. Um, I worked with a trainer for. Six, six months, eight months, and then I moved on to another trainer for another six months, and that was the one that I feel like I really, really loved. So, that's the one you reached mm -hmm. out to when I first started. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, for the most part, like the different training styles when you're building your clientele, you have to know what you're good at and you have to know uh, kind of what works. Um, so, like weight loss, um, weight loss is going to be uh, always big to me, um, but at the same time, I'm very into aesthetics. I, yeah. uh, I mix in which you Probably everybody's seen the workouts that I put uh, Kelly through. Kelly's one of the more advanced clients, um, but the way I write the program, it's a bodybuilding style mixed with athletic conditioning or athletic training. So it's a little bit so of both worlds. Over it's, there, like, how are you bodybuilding? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like, definitely oh a hybrid program. Gosh. Hybrid program. <laughs> yeah. But it comes from um, a lot of a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, um, a lot of studying. Um, it's not something that we're just. Uh, that's my biggest thing. Yeah. We, I see people on Instagram and like, I, I took this, I took this uh, workout, took this, I put it together. This is my workout for the day. It's not like you're, we're, as a trainer, you just throw a bunch of workouts at the wall and see what yeah. sticks. Like, there's got to be a purpose to everything. Yeah. Like, you're doing a kettlebell swing. Well, why is it? Are you just trying to look for calorie burn? Or are you trying to strengthen your low back, mm -hmm. hit your glutes, hit your hamstring, hit your calf? Like, there's always got to be intent to your workouts, but when i talk with people that's going to be the first thing that yeah. i kind of mention like where are you trying to get in three months six mm -hmm. months 12 months so whenever i'm uh, i'm kind of the jack of all trades but i'm really good at uh, just like um two fields in my opinion but when they come to me and they talk about like what their goals are i have no problem saying you know what there's another coach here that yeah. could easily handle yeah, you, you probably better than me <clears throat> that actually goes into the next question because i think that's a you have to be okay and like not feel bad saying I'm not the most experienced in this field like this person is like there's nothing wrong with that um, and if you actually care about helping people you're doing them yeah. the you know best thing but it says were you nervous when you first started training I would get I had a couple people reach out to me and something <laughs> and I was like to be completely honest I like you would be my first client I'm willing to take you on like we can work through it together mm -hmm. yeah and if there's something I don't know I will look it up like you have to put your ego yeah. aside and know that you're never gonna yeah. know everything yeah. it's a, in it's science like yeah. you're always yeah. learning yeah <laughs> there's that's always exactly right that's exactly right that's and no one trainer knows everything there's yeah. that's it would be impossible yeah to, that's like and you have to understand that but um, kind of going back to the question like 
I was very nervous. Yeah, I, was I was extremely, nervous. it was different being on the other side. Like, yeah. and my coach, he was very, he was very like, step up your game, you know what you're doing. Cause yeah. I played athletic, I played sports, but then you have people who have never done a sit up before. Yeah. Never held a plank before. That, you know that what I mean? is like, difficult, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like teaching the mechanics of a bicep curl, teaching yeah. the mechanics of a lateral raise, like what kind of, you, uh, in, I talk about like a lot of degrees, like 45 degrees, 90 yeah. degrees, 75 degrees, and who just look at me like, yeah. what, what, what do you, well, look, there's it's, people it's who, sunny outside, what who are you weren't about? in <laughs> athletics at all growing up, I feel like there's a lack of coordination there, and so like we would take that for granted, and you have to be able to yeah. like step back and realize that there's a lot of, like you have to break down each step of a sit up, or yeah. you know, of like basic movements that you think are easy, yeah. that aren't. Yeah, uh, I was, when I first started, um, I was told that like uh, the example of Larry Bird, Larry Bird was an amazing basketball player, but he would have, when he started to coach for the Pacers, I think it was, uh, he would, he'd like just come up two steps, hit the shot. Why can't you do this? Yeah. So he was a really good player, but he couldn't coach yeah. and like some of the best coaches, um, I mean, they don't may not have the physique. I just think of like um, a yeah, lot of college coaches. It, yeah, exactly right. Like Bill Belichick. Uh -huh. Does he look like um, he could run a 40-yard dash? Like probably not. But he knows so much. He knows how to coach. That ability to coach is is huge for sure. Kind of already answered this, but how do you program our workouts? Yeah, uh, definitely, bo definitely bodybuilding. I get a lot of questions about this as well. Yeah. So well, um, the thing is, you guys see. I mean. <laughs> Because he records, uh, you see most of our workouts, but you also are still not seeing the bigger picture. I don't record everything. He doesn't record everything. So there's things you're not seeing and you don't know like the background of the program. So like before you criticize, yeah. <laughs> yeah. people be Why like, are you doing that? that makes no sense. <laughs> you're like, okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the way I program it is, in which I try to get creative. So um, like taking the example of a kettlebell swing and normally, normally, programs are you do a set so like say if you have a three-day split um, you're doing a push pull um, legs normally you stick with that workout for weeks at a time yeah so normally it's gonna be the same workout you might have to adjust the weights a little bit but you let your body adapt um, what I do is I try to get creative with some of my more advanced clients and I say we're gonna do the zoom the same movement patterns but we're gonna do them differently. Yeah. So like we could do um, a deadlift is a hinge um, when you're working on your low back kettlebell swing. Also you can do that same motion when you're hitting a rower because your pivot point is still the hips. You're kind of still engaging your low back. So the pull motion is still there but we're doing it a lot differently. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I do um, and that's a large reason as to why I'm so successful because I still have the science backing it, but I get creative. I'm very creative with how I get yeah. get it all done. When it keeps people more interested, but there's some people who like probably might not like that style. Like they like more cookie cutter stuff, and that just also goes back to like you have to find a. Not every coach is going to work for every person, but when the amount that we train keeping things interesting is yeah. like way more exciting Keep, especially at five in the morning yeah. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> um, what is your workout schedule uh so i do uh, my main lifts um well currently i'm on a strength and conditioning program um well actually on the first that kind of goes away uh me and another coach have been kind of can throwing a bunch of things around. So we came up with a program for ourselves. So I do my main lifts. I'll hit um, chest, uh, back, shoulders, just like a normal uh, split, um, all the different muscle groups. And then I will let my body recover for a couple hours. I do those um, somewhat early in the morning and then I'll let my body recover. And then I do um, a metabolic conditioning. So we'll do like a CrossFit AMRAP where we're doing like uh, snatches mixed with uh, handstands you know we'll yeah. do we'll do like uh deadlifts mixed with uh box jumps and we'll do like just some of the stuff to kind of keep your athleticism around um my big thing is when you, most bodybuilders are not the most functional they're not the most yeah. flexible they don't have the athleticism yeah. um the ones who do are amazing they're probably like physical specimens but um me personally i don't have any like aesthetic goals uh personally i'm pretty comfortable with how I look. Yeah. Uh, the day I lose my athleticism, this is gonna be the day yeah. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> when I can't do a box, when I can't, when I can't uh, touch the rim anymore, I was just like, this is gonna be bad, but, but yeah.
Um, it says you guys should try a challenge with each other. Da da da. Not sure, but would be entertaining. So if you think of a challenge we can do. Also, if you guys have any like dance videos, oh, we, oh yeah. we need to help. That's right. That's exactly right. We're trying right. to do a dance video once a month, and so far we've done zero. We gotta do three. April. We gotta do three. Well, we we gotta do four. four. <laughs> Basically, we need four. Uh, did you know Jake before you started training with him? I knew him from like in the gym. Because I would be here early. Yeah. When she would be. Yeah. Here. But uh, no, I had ne we had never like sat down and had a full conversation or anything like that. Um, <laughs> where will your honeymoon be? <laughs> Maui. <laughs> that's a little, little wrong question, but that's fine. Um, how do you deal with per with a person in the group who is negative? I. This is your question. I don't do group training. <laughs> Um, a lot of times, again, it comes down to chemistry. Um, yeah. If I do notice um, somebody is kind of lagging, um, I'll often say like, hey, take this set off and we'll kind of let, because most of, most of my groups, they're in cruise control. Um, I look for bad form. And if you know what you're looking for, like it's normally pretty quick. Like mm -hmm. you look at somebody, okay, they're good. Look at somebody, ooh, rounded back. Hey, shoulders back, yeah. back straight. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And I will, say okay like take the set off let's talk what's going on are you okay um i do get down on that emotional level a mm -hmm. lot of times like what's going on um in your life is is there anything that i can do um most of the times i will try and start with uh our group saying hey give me something positive going on in yep. your life like just just kind of set the tone especially early in the morning um i asked dan uh just uh was it wednesday or something like that and he's like i just got some uh, what did he say? Gosh darn, I forget what it was, but like um, him and another girl that I was training, like it just kind of set the mood, like in, everything yeah. was 5 a.m. in the morning, like we were cracking up laughing and we were just talking about just funny stuff. But if somebody is negative again, um, I boil it down to chemistry. Yeah. There might be, they might be happier with somebody who, and you don't want to give clients up or anything like that, but you have to think about what's best for them. Yeah. So if they might have better chemistry with another um, coach then so be it mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna benefit them like yeah I do want to train um, a lot of people I there are certain people that I would love to train in but if it's not a good fit you gotta you gotta have that come yeah. to Jesus talk yeah it's you know? different I mean if it's just one day like oh I'm tired today or oh I had a bad day whatever but if it's like a consistent thing I've had a couple like with online check-ins are very important because that's my main communication with them most of my clients text me every day but still if I had, I had a couple clients who like weren't checking in consistently and so I kept having to reach out to them, which is not like it, I should never do that, but that should, that's not my priority. Yeah. Like that's not, I, I, I shouldn't have to come, come after you to get information. There should be a, once again, like a mutual, you know, you have to meet in the middle. For sure. So, and then you just have to have that conversation. Is it that something's wrong or is it that you're not enjoying it? Or is it that, you know, you have to just talk it through. And unfortunately, like with groups, there might be somebody in the group who doesn't like another person in the group, but um, they don't yeah. want to say it. Yeah. Um, so switching up groups or some people might start getting annoyed with a group. So yeah. you might say, okay, like here's the workout program and I'll see you like twice a week or something yeah. like that. You know, instead of working out like every, every day or every mm -hmm. other day or whatever, um, they might need to switch from a group to a one-on-one -on -one or I've had some people who are very negative and everything like that. And then I plug them in with some of my groups and you a lot of times feed off of the energy of the group and everything's fine, but it just kind of depends on what's good for them. Favorite part of being a PT and least favorite? Uh, favorite is that the gym is a very social setting, so it's not all work. Like I don't have um, a 100% desk job. I'm still on a desk, I'm still programming for, I'm still in meetings mm -hmm. a couple hours a day, but for the most part, people come in and out of this gym like clockwork yeah. so i'm always seeing fresh faces fresh conversations like hey you know how was your son's soccer practice mm -hmm. and on the flip side like hey i know your your brother um was taking you to a concert yeah. like you know what i mean like stuff like that um it's fresh it's mm -hmm. a social setting i love that aspect of it uh the bad part about that is when you try and work out um everybody's like hey oh, uh, yeah. and it's it's kind of tough um when i do work out i try to plug my headphones in yeah. i am one of those guys i act like i don't hear yeah. you <laughs> sometimes yeah. if i have a hoodie on i'll put my hood up um yep. people don't recognize me even the better um but yeah that's that's the downfall of it for sure um 
Yeah, my I don't, my favorite part, I guess, is like sounds cliche, but you're helping people better themselves. And normally, you, even if it's not like a physical goal, helping them work through like some of the insecurities they have. Like that's probably my favorite. Is like stop with. There's a lot of people, females, who have like they struggle with food, they struggle with body image issues, and so normally getting into weight training and just being in the gym, you can get them to focus on how they're feeling and performing rather than how they're looking, which is a huge thing. So I've, I've helped a lot of girls, um, or I've seen a lot of girls who like, they no longer care about their weight, which mm -hmm. like little things that's, like that, it's huge. Like that to me, yeah, it's like, that's a tough that means to do, you're but, starting yeah. your day. Now you're not beating yourself up <laughs> over your weight. Yeah. So you're automatically starting your day off better. Yeah. And then least favorite is, um, I don't know. Oh. Personal trainers are super judgmental of one another. <laughs> I don't love oh that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. Oh and my gosh. Because of the internet, everyone thinks that they know everything. everything. And so, especially with like social media, there's a lot of criticism all the time, which like, I don't care. And we're both certified, so it's like, okay, I know what I'm actually talking about. I'm not gonna let your little comment bother me, but yeah. there's so many yeah. comments and opinions yeah. on everything. It's, it's just really interesting, because if you, if you go into somebody's like account, and if it just says fitness professional, they don't have any credentials. Yeah. Watch out for what they're saying. Yeah. Because they may have just looked at my page or yeah, Kelly's exactly. page. And like, oh, here's a new workout yeah. for you. Like, the, oh. People don't do their own research. They'll see one thing and they're like, they take it and run with it rather than being like, oh, that's interesting. Let me see if this is actually correct. No, no one does that anymore. <laughs> um, we, I already touched on this in mind for creating workouts. Is there an actual formula to determine sets and reps? Yes. Um, is it normal? Oh, I talked about that too. Okay, oh, I think we're done. Well, okay, you can hit on this. I answered this in mine. Best back exercises for ladies. The best back. <laughs> <laughs> Questions um, like that bother me. It does, okay, so again, it does depend on what the goal is. Yeah. Um, so if somebody needs to uh, strengthen their back, uh, like if they're working, if, they, if they're, they're trying to hit their legs um, hard, they're trying to shape their butt, trying to get more hamstrings, um, but their back prevents them from doing a lot of glute exercises because a lot of that falls on the back. If that's the case, um, a lot of horizontal rows, um, anything to ignite the erectors, um, stuff like that is gonna be beneficial if you're looking for shape. Um, a lot of times a vertical pull, so like doing like pull-ups, yep. practicing like assisted pull-up, um, those are gonna be very good. Um, again, it just kinda depends, there's no best. I know, yeah, the, and it's not for ladies. <laughs> Yeah. We have yeah. to we're the same. Yeah. We have the same back muscle. <laughs> yeah. Honestly yeah. though, like if you I feel like a lot of people struggle with back issues because their core is weak, so like doing planks and like simple exercises like that also make a huge difference for yeah. just your back health. Yeah, we were we were talking about um so was it you? Oh well, yeah, that was yeah, it was you. So we were talking about just like shaping the body. Oh yeah. And we were talking about when people do the dips when they'll have like a plate and they'll be doing a dip oh. and it builds up your oblique. Yeah. And so like we were talking like, if you build up your oblique, you're gonna have more you're of a boxy, boxy. a boxy look. Yeah, because you're building the muscles that's gonna yeah. be on the side. So if you're looking for like the V, yeah. um, in which that's not just for women, again, it's yeah. for men, so men want the V look to kind of make the waist look smaller. Mm -hmm. um, so again, going back to the aesthetics part of it, um, you have to know what your goals are because if I want that V, I'm not gonna be yeah, working don't a do lot those. of my obliques going side to side. Yeah. Um, however, contracting forward and back, that's gonna be yeah. different, but side to side. You're just building up your side. Exactly right, <laughs> exactly right. Just putting Ex muscle on exactly. here. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. All right, I think. I think that was all the questions. Thank you for answering the questions. Thanks for taking the time. We just he just got done kicking Dan and I's butt <laughs> leg yeah. day. We did like how many leg extensions? Uh it should have been seven hundred. I think so. <laughs> That's great. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for asking the questions. If you have any other questions, comment down below. I'll try to get back to them. Um, yeah, thank you. Bye. Awesome.